If you're about to buy a new home that has solar panels already installed, this video today is going to be for you. We're going to be telling you all the things you will need to know and all the questions you will need to ask of either your developer or the person you're buying your new home from. Let's go. Buying a new home is really exciting. I've just done that 12 months ago myself. But in the process, you've just got to make sure you're doing your due diligence checks. You join me here just outside of Old Edge in Cheshire, where we're on a new build development, where they've got lots of solar panels installed. And this was really poignant because when you're buying a new home, there's a few things you need to consider. Things around ownership of solar panels, the spec and system size that you've actually got installed. And there's a couple of hidden things that I want to go through today to make sure you don't get caught out. So this is what we would expect from a typical setup on a new build estate, such as the one behind me. There are two different options behind solar panels. Most commonly on new build, they go for inset panels. This is because essentially the home builder doesn't need to pay for the cost of tiles. And often there's a thing called a SAP calculation. This is essentially making sure that your home meets a minimum energy performance rating. And as part of that calculation, they'll have a minimum amount of solar that will be required. Obviously, as time goes on, more and more new homes will just have solar fitted as standard, but sometimes it can also be an optional extra as well. So when you're buying a new home, particularly off plan, just make sure that you're asking these questions to make sure whether there will or will not be solar provided, and if there's any option to potentially upgrade as well. Now the typical system like the ones behind me are an inset solar panel. Uh, these will be linked with normally a string inverter. This is essentially uh, DC current is generated on the roof that converts to AC that you can use in your home and then if your developer has agreed it with the national grid you can potentially export any excess energy out of the grid for a smart export guarantee payment but this is where the paperwork involved is really important paperwork that you want to make sure that you're requesting is either a G98 or G99 certificate and what this does is basically links with the size of inverter that you have installed so if your solar system is 3.68 kilowatts and below, that would be G98, typically speaking about eight, so eight to 10 solar panels. If you've got more than that, then it's quite likely your system will be commissioned under what's called a G99 connection agreement with the national grid. You wanna make sure they've got this because you wanna make sure your developer has essentially asked for the permission to connect to the grid. Another piece of paperwork you're going to want to make sure you've got your hands on is the MCS certificate. This basically makes sure all the products that have been installed in your home have been done to the required MCS standards. With these two pieces of paperwork, you can submit them to your energy supplier and get smart export guarantee payments. If there is an export agreement. It's quite common, like on the estate that's behind me, where because there are so many homes with solar, instead of the developer paying to upgrade the local infrastructure, so the local supply transformers, they want to link on with the existing system. What they'll say is you get no export whatsoever at your home. So it's really important to find out because you might be thinking, I'm going to get all these all important smart export guarantee payments. You're rubbing your hands and your inverter actually exports nothing at all. And this leads me on to something quite nicely. If you have an export arrangement, then of course you can ship those payments out and get paid a typical payment of around 15 pence per kilowatt hour. However, if you have a zero export agreement, you could potentially link it up with what's called AC coupled battery storage. Now I've done a full video on DC coupled and AC coupled so you can understand that in a bit more detail, but in very simple terms, we can leave your inverter up in the attic exactly where it is and we can track this information in real time and store any energy in the battery before it has the opportunity to be exported out to the grid. So instead of wasting energy, so use it or lose it, you're in a position where you can use it or store it ready to cook your tea later on. Another piece of paperwork you really got to get your hands on is any insurance backed workmanship warranty. This is assuming that your home is maybe a little bit on the older side. Any new bills will normally have a developer warranty. You just want to make sure the solar panel warranty comes as a part of this because often manufacturer warranties will only cover the parts that have been installed and just cover the cost of the part 
i.e. if an inverter breaks, the manufacturer might have a 10-year warranty, but that only covers the cost of the inverter. It doesn't cover the cost of any engineer to replace it. And of course, if you've got micro inverters, which are essentially really small inverters that are bolted to the back of a solar panel, which is very common on a new build estate, you may well need scaffolding. So making sure you've got that insurance back workmanship warranty paperwork to hand from your developer on handover, or if you're buying a home, you're making sure you're getting all this warranty information as part of your solicitor pack, that's gonna be really important. So now you've moved into your new home and you're quite excited to get going with your solar system after you've unpacked your boxes, of course. The one thing just to note is that Smart Export Guarantee, you will have to re-register you yourself to the home. So this is often where you'll have to re-upload that paperwork to the energy supplier so you're getting paid for export payments. Things like feed-in tariff, you'll also need to make sure you hand it over as well. Feed-in tariff, for anybody who doesn't know or isn't aware, is for much older systems. You get a much higher payment per unit, but it's done on, an, on, a, on a generation basis, so you'll have to actually physically submit a reading. Whereas with smart export guarantee payments, it's your smart meter that's going to track this and send this out to your energy supplier. Either way, if you've moved into your own home, you need to identify, is it feed-in tariff or is it smart export guarantee? If it's a new build, it'll almost certainly be smart export guarantee and making sure you're registering that the supplier nice and early because it, particularly if it's a sunny day, not like today, you'll be generating plenty of energy and you just don't want to be burning your money as it's leaving the house. When you're in the due diligence process of purchasing a home, some of the just to be quite cautious of is who owns the solar panels. Some older systems and some modern systems as well are under a rent a roof scheme or if you're commercial, something like a power purchase agreement. And this is essentially where somebody else owns the solar panels that are on your roof and effectively gives you cut price electric for the home, but makes the benefit of any export payments. This was particularly prevalent in the feed-in tariff times. So it's just something to be aware of. You want it in writing from either your developer or from the person you're buying the home from that you own that system. Just because it comes with the house doesn't necessarily mean you do and you don't want to get yourself tied in knots. One thing that many people don't realise is the fact that most inverters, particularly those with battery storage, will actually come with a mobile phone app. They often have a little dongle that's in the bottom of your inverter and you're able to connect directly to this. This means you can read the information of what's happening on your solar system. So let's say we're generating two kilowatts worth of energy. Well, you want to use that when you're generating it. Put the washing machine on at that point in time. But unless you connect it on an app, you often have to go up into the attic, knock the front of the screen in order to be able to get this information. So make sure when that house is being transferred that you have any appropriate passwords. You know how to get yourself logged in to the inverter's mobile phone app. If you've got a much more basic inverter, some of them don't have internet connectivity, particularly some of the older ones. If you have battery storage installed, often you can still track what the solar system is doing and retrospectively install that functionality. Servicing maintenance is another really good point. I often commonly get asked, do I need a service? I've just bought one. I want to know if it's if it's working. Well, once you've got yourself set up on your app and once you've got yourself registered for smart export guarantee, the next thing to look at is any maintenance requirements. Sometimes, particularly with new builds, your actual developer will have a maintenance requirement for you. Just double check this one off. But most of the time, solar panels are a fit and forget technology. You just have a service every five years on the system. We typically would charge about £150 for this service. And this is where you test the current that comes off the roof, make sure we've got no open circuits, any poor connections. We can open the isolators because your inverter is capable of telling you lots of intelligent stuff, but it can't physically check the screw termination on an isolator. So normally every five years that would get picked up. You just want to test and inspect it, make sure the readings and results that your inverter is picking up are true and correct. And that often helps with home insurance as well. Some home insurers aren't too bothered about solar panels. They just accept that as part of it. But other home insurers, and this is becoming more and more of a requirement, are asking more about solar panels and making sure that they're maintained properly a bit like a gas boiler. Now let's talk a little bit about upgrades. Many people don't realise when you're speaking with the developer that there might be the opportunity to add extra solar panels on at the time of installation. It's often quite tricky once you've had a solar system to installed to be able to go back up and add more panels on. You're paying for the cost of scaffolding. It often works out much, much more cost effective to do that at the same time. However, battery storage is really easily added on later. So if you've already moved into your home and you're kind of thinking, 
I wish I'd have asked that question at the outset. I wish I'd have gone for a hybrid inverter. Battery storage is very straightforward to install upon, like the house that we've just done here on this estate, effectively whereby they've already got panels installed and we've just added a power wall three. Really easy to add retrospectively onto a system for it to track what your solar system is doing, meet the demand of the home. And you can also get it with house backup as well. So in the event that the power outage goes, particularly if you're somewhere more rural, effectively you can back your home up in an instant. One of the things I'm going to come on to a little bit later is around the sizing of inverters and making sure that your inverter is appropriately sized for the number of solar panels that you physically have installed because you can sometimes have lots of solar panels, a very small inverter. You think you generate lots of energy, but actually your inverter's throttling it. If you've moved into a house and you don't feel like you're getting generation out of your inverter, or if you feel your inverter's broken, often they're really straightforward to be able to replace. And this leads me quite nicely onto a point that I made earlier on just regarding inverter size. What can commonly happen, let's say I've got 10 440 watt solar panels, 4.4 kilowatts worth of solar, it's quite common for developers to put a much smaller inverter in, three kilowatts, two kilowatts. Now that might mean nothing to you, but what this basically does, think of it like standing on a hose pipe we generate our energy. If your inverter isn't, roughly speaking, the same size as your solar array, if it's much smaller, then at your inverter stage, you might be generating on the roof, but your inverter can squeeze the amount of generation that's capable of getting through at a point in time. So sometimes if an inverter is broken or if it's not working or generating what you think it, it might should be doing, then you're in a position where you can effectively upgrade the size of the inverter. But just a little note with that, wherever we upgrade the size of the inverter, sometimes we have to write out to the National Grid to get their permission before we make that connection. But it is a good time to do that. So how do I know what my solar panel should be generating is a great question. So on your MCS certificate, so this is the what you get off your developer or uh, the person you're purchasing the home off, will give you an annual estimated amount of generation. This will have been calculated by an engineer like myself and like we do in our team, effectively whereby over an annual basis, you'll get an idea of in total, how many kilowatt hours we're expecting your system to generate. It's often not possible to work out what any single day will do because the amount of sunlight will change day upon day and it will have varied since the previous year. So that can be quite tricky. We can only ascertain this either at a point in time or really on an annual basis. A great rule of thumb to do is get yourself the access to the app, get the data over a period of time, track it over a few months and you'll get a very good idea. Hypothetically speaking, I've been tracking this for six months. I'm expecting an annual generation of 5,000 kilowatt hours a year. My system's generated 2,500 kilowatt hours by June, or roughly there or thereabouts. We're gonna know that that information is about right. Now on the flip side to that, if you find that you've only generated 500 kilowatt hours, but yet we're expecting 2,500 kilowatt hours at the midway point, then you're probably gonna know something's going up. And therefore that's something you can pick up with either the house developer or you can pick up with your installer. Paperwork. It's really important that you keep your paperwork all together. Now, if you happen to have lost it or the person you're buying the home over doesn't simply have a copy of the paperwork, then you can apply to the, either the MCS or the National Grid, Electricity Northwest, for example, for a copy of that paperwork. If it's been registered, they'll have it on their record set. Now, make sure you keep this paperwork safe because of my next point I want to make, which is resale value of your home. I get asked this question quite a lot. Will solar panels increase the value of my home? It's an interesting one and it's a bit subjective, but one thing I can say is solar panels will directly affect your EPC rating, which is essentially the rating of energy efficiency for your home. It will increase that value, which by most people's standards, they know, well, if I buy this, my energy bills are gonna be lower. And therefore that definitely has an effect on the buying process. From my home, as I mentioned earlier, I recently purchased a new home. Uh, and what I found with my existing system was my system would have been about £10,000 retail price. Now, obviously, I fitted it myself, so I appreciate I probably wouldn't have paid that. And I sold my system for about eight grand, but that was about three and a bit years after installing it. So ultimately, by the time I'd made my savings and actually resold it back again, I'm probably broad as I am long, most of the times it doesn't necessarily vastly increase the value of your home. There definitely is a retention in value behind that solar system, i.e. if you put £10,000 into the home, it just doesn't disappear off the face of the earth. Most people will happily pay an uplift in the house value because ultimately they're set to get lower energy bills. In some scenarios, it will be the case the fact that that will increase the 
that the house value, but I think it's a very rare occasion that it would devalue the house in any way. Most of the time people go, I've got a lower bill as a result of this system. Of course, I'm happy to pay a little bit more for it. Something else just to know, let's say you've not got solar panels installed or you're thinking of adding some extra solar panels into the equation. Mortgage providers often will give you a rebate for green renewable energy or they will offer you additional financing at 0% APR. Now, I'm not a financial expert, but check it out with your individual mortgage providers because you could just get a grand or two grand worth of cash back from your provider just simply by installing solar panels. There are often time periods and windows and terms and conditions apply, of course, but just check it out because that curiosity may well just net you a grand. If you're a first time buyer and you're thinking, I'm not quite, I'd love battery storage, but I'm not quite in the position to be able to purchase it. And I've got excess energy. I've got no export agreement. It's just going nowhere. What can I do differently? My personal suggestion, and I do this quite commonly at home during the summertime, is I set things like slow cookers on timers. I set my washing machine. I'll set my dishwasher and I'll set my tumbler dryer on to go on during the middle of the day. Uh, essentially, you're in a position whereby if you're generating an abundance, stagger the times of them using smart timer plugs but what you can pretty much do is as you're generating it you can nick a bit of the energy and put it into running some of the appliances that you would otherwise have to pay full price to run. Now I believe solar panels are of a massive benefit for those people about to purchase a, a new home. Please don't be nervous if you are about to buy a new home with solar panels. They are a really safe technology that will stand the test of time as long as they're properly fitted and maintained. If you have any questions, if you're a new home buyer and you're thinking, I've got a couple of questions here and I want to ask them, drop them in the comments below and I'm more than happy to uh, answer those questions. Other than that, thank you so much for taking the time to watch and once again.